Awesome. Hey, greetings. It's my favorite day of the week. It's Monday. And that means, well, you guys know, that's why you're here. It's the Journey's Webcast. I'm so excited uh, to, to be, now this is the 13th episode. Can you believe this? 13 times we've been getting together on Mondays and uh, bringing you guests from all over the world. I'm super excited uh, tonight, uh, today, well, it depends on where you are. Uh, with my um, with my guest Jack Maxwell, but before I introduce him and bring him on, I'm gonna um, I just want to give you a little quick update because for those of you who've been watching the uh, the webcast or following any of my social media stuff, you know I had that kind of crazy uh, night where my room was spinning and I thought I was either having a heart attack or I was having an aneurysm. And it turned out it looks like it's some sort of bout with vertigo. Uh, I've been to the doctor. I've ridden in his crazy chair, the neurologist. Uh, they've given me some some pills. I think it's viral. Uh, I'm still not 100% right. You know, I don't even really want to get on a bicycle, let alone my motorcycle, because if I move my head fast, it's a little like I'm uh, <laughs> maybe it's like I got a, a, a little bit too much booze. But uh, no, it's not. It's just a lightheaded, weird feeling. Anyway, I get an MRI on um, on Thursday, and I'll see the the crazy daredevil uh, doctor on uh, the following week, and we'll see if we can get to the bottom of this. But um, what's going on in our country is crazy right now, right? With this um, escalating numbers of cases, I just got a flash on the phone before I came on live here that uh, Gavin Newsom now has ordered a lockdown of California in entirely, and I I don't know. Um, I, I I only saw the flash. Uh, so I don't know what that actually means, but I guess no more indoor eating at restaurants, no more bars. I mean, it's uh, and it's statewide. So I don't know whether or not that kind of thing, everything they say sometimes ripples from California and goes across country. I, I, I don't know, but I hope you're doing OK and I hope you're making the best and and. Uh, and in finding new discoveries of your own during these uh, times of lockdown and quarantine, because that's the best thing you can do. Learn something new, try something new, and just, you know, don't, uh, don't think about what you're losing, think about what you might gain. And I think we can all come together. It's going to be crazy. We're in summer. But enough of that. Thanks for tuning in. I want to tell you a little bit about Jack Maxwell. Now, he of course, we know him as the host of Booze Traveler on the Travel Channel. He's also a professional actor and an adventurer. And uh, as we're going to hear today, he learned his best lessons, stories, and certainly a lot of lighthearted jokes um, uh, from the barrooms of South Boston. Now, Jack has made guests, you know, he, he's not just a, 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 a traveler. He's actually a, a true professional actor. He's made guest appearances on hit broadcast shows such as uh, 24, Lost, Without a Trace, Beverly Hills, 90210. Um, Jack became a lifetime member of the Actor Studio back in 2003, and he won the Best Actor in a Lead Role at the 2012 Pan Pacific Film Festival. And he was presented with both the Emerald Star Award and the Golden Hale Award from the Southern California Motion Picture Council. This is what's so cool, too. He's shared the stage. Now, we're not talking the, the screen. He shared the stage with Al Pacino and Jessica Chastain and Oscar Wilde's Salumi. Yes. And the hit movie, Wild Salumi, which was kind of a behind-the-scenes look at the production of that play. In this series, The Booze Traveler, Jack ventured the globe just to get a taste of each country's alcohol as well to quench his curiosity about what people drink, why they drink it, and the stories they tell when they do. Jack has explored more than 50, maybe 60 countries across six continents. But everywhere he goes, he stops, connects with locals, immerses himself in local culture, and learns about that country's unique relationship with liquor often le lending a helping hand in the production of alcohol and drinks. Now, Jack has traveled through all these places by hot air balloon, chicken bus, camel caravan, tuk-tuk, donkey wagon. But, but I don't know. We have to know about, has he been on a motorcycle or a scooter? He's joined the Maasai warriors in the wild of Tanzania, Roma gypsies in Hungary, Vikings in Sweden, nomads in Mongolia. In Nepal, he drank Hong Lassi with the Babas, screamed with soccer or football, as they call it, with fans in Turkey, danced with the Zulu in South Africa, and waxed whiskey poetic with an astrophysicist in Argentina. 
All along, Jack shares these and other stories from the road, along with some surprising life lessons he's learned from the most unlikely people in the most unusual of places. With cocktail in hand and whether you drink or not, Jack gives us a unique look at the world through the lens of a good glass of booze. Several years ago, Jack faced another nemesis, which forced him on the journey to fight cancer. Diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma, it cut his booze traveling days a bit short. So, but today, Jack hosts a new travel show called Hit the High Road, where he explores and uncovers the world of cannabis, CBT, and its therapeutic benefits for patients suffering from, suffering from everything from cancer to anxiety and more. Segments are available for viewing on YouTube, and maybe we'll see some today. Like so many of us, though, he's locked down in Phoenix, Arizona. But Jack still mixes, stirs, and shares a good cocktail with friends. He hosts Jack's Place Sunday Night Cocktail Hour, which is live streamed over both Facebook and YouTube every Sunday at 5 o'clock Pacific time, 8 o'clock in New York. You should join him. But let's bring on uh, Jack Maxwell. Welcome to Journey's Webcast. Wow. That was, uh, that was some introduction. I didn't even know I did all those things. You really did some digging. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> well, you know, I just, uh, you know, that it's, 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 it's the places you've been. We've, it's, it's, it's a shame we never crossed paths earlier in some of those crazy places. But uh, as I read more and more about you, I'm like, this guy is the coolest guy. I mean, getting a gig to travel the world and drink? Yeah, I was very lucky to get that. You know, nothing about uh, me <laughs> is, is special. I was lucky enough to audition for a, for a part uh, on a show, and uh, and basically they they gave it to me. It was that simple. I think anybody could have hosted that show. They would have done it their own way. I'm sure you could have hopped on your motorcycle for most of that journey anyway, and done some of the same things. But it was it was truly an honor to be able to host Booze Traveler for four years, and not only to go to those places. More mm. importantly, spend time with the people of the world and learn something about them. Because when you come home, uh, the, the memories you have, not only of those experiences, but, but how you feel about tolerance and acceptance and uh, empathy, uh, it, it, it broad, broadens your horizons. It really does. And uh, it was just a gift to be able to do that. Uh, you 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 just hit so many chords, man. I'm 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 feeling the harmonies right here. You know, it is about the people. And when you come home, you you don't remember that cathedral. You don't remember that uh, crazy architecture more than anything. You remember those people. You yeah, that's what there. I said. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Hey, what are we drinking today? Oh, you know, um, I <laughs> you know what happened was I had to do something right before this, and. Uh, I, I had the drink and I drank it too fast. I said, I have to save this for Alan. <laughs> so either you can play a video of something I'm in and I'll go make a quick drink or I'll have to just stick to my what was left over after I finished my cocktail, a glass of water. But I'd love to have a drink with you. OK, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do that here in a minute. Absolutely. Because there's some stuff. So I um, oh, and I can uh, make a drink pretty quickly, by the way. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've got a lot of experience in that. Can't, I'll, don't you? I'll pull the cork or two. For sure. Okay. okay, so so I love that. Um, so we'll get to what you're drinking today. But I'm curious. This is something I've, I, I've thought about. Uh, Jack, Jack and I actually had a little test uh, session yesterday because there's so you know sometimes these things go crazy, and I, I have to thank uh, you for being so patient. But um, but we did we we talked about a lot of different things, and um, one one of the things we were talking about movies. I, I want to talk about books now. You know, in this this is a crazy thing. I have to tell you. And this is me coming clean. I've been doing a lot of video content. I've been doing some writing, but I haven't been doing any reading. And I feel really bad about it because so many people tell me, wow, they're, they're reading books they never could do. What, what are you reading today? Oh, you know, I think reading is, is one of the great joys, especially now when we're forced to slow down and realize what's important, who we want to spend time with. I know that Sometimes the choices are limited, especially now because we all want to stay safe and well during this pandemic. Um, but I went back to some of the some of the classics that I grew up reading, like The Outsiders, um, uh, which which I read when I was a kid uh, by S. E. Hinton, who was uh, I believe a fourteen year old girl who who 
she wrote that and she had to use SE because people wouldn't publish it if it was a girl. Uh, Red Sky of Morning, Illusions by Richard Bach. There's so many uh, oh. just, just great books uh, to read. But right now, currently on my nightstand, uh, I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. I can't put it down. Wow, on anti-gravity. Really? <laughs> I said I can't put down. I, 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 I know, I know. It's just like, when you first said anti-gravity, I thought about that crazy experience. You know, I didn't, we didn't talk about it, but I, one night I got, I woke, I, I, I rose from my chair. I was watching some music uh, on the television and, uh, and everything started spinning and I felt like yeah, I, I heard was, about that. Terrible, yeah. scary. Oh, terrible, I terrible. Who suffers from vertigo? Even just sitting down for five minutes gets up and and the the room is spinning and they can't figure out why. No matter what she does, it's horrible. I'm so sorry. Oh yeah. Well, uh, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of this. So, so this your friend is, is. How long have they been battling this? My aunt. Uh, your aunt. Yes. I, I I think it's been five or six years now. Oh, a horrible it. feeling because it's like just getting off a roller coaster every couple of minutes and. Uh, yeah, they, I, I, I feel for you, man. Have they figured out why? They haven't figured out yet, but you know, they're taking a lot of pictures of my brain. And I already could tell them that, that there's really not much up there, but, uh, but they can do all the pictures they want. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, um, so you're in Phoenix. I am. And, um, Right now, we, you know, we talk. We don't. We're not going to get too deep into this whole pandemic thing. But what's going on there? Because it's it's it, it, it's every day I read Arizona is going crazy. Yeah, through the roof. You know, I've been living in California since 1996, and I just came here because after being diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, I stayed on the road, did a couple of more episodes. Uh, excuse me, a couple of more seasons of booze travel. But then it was time to do something as it was getting worse. Uh, and the doctor recommended, he says, now it's probably time. Because it's pretty slow growing, and I didn't have a lot of symptoms. But uh, so I, I decided, where am I going to do this chemo? So I decided to come to Phoenix. I have friends and family here. I spent some time here as a kid. My mother still lives here. I got some good friends. So I decided to do my treatments right here in uh, Phoenix. And I've been here ever since. I just wrapped up uh, not only the main chemo treatments, but two years of maintenance chemo. And I was just about ready to move back to LA and everything shut down. As you said, Governor Gavin Newsom uh, just put a, another lockdown on things. And, yeah. you know, obviously there are gonna be people on both sides of this. I'm on the side of science and, and safety and uh, I recommend wearing a mask. I would do it. I, th I think that it, it keeps other people safe. Even if you didn't want to do it, you'd want to keep someone safe, I would think. Even if you don't believe it, if so many people are telling us that, it, that it's working, I don't. I just don't understand the, the resistance and the, and the selfishness of that. Uh, that 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 being said, I don't know exactly what's going on in Arizona. I'm trying to stay safe here. Uh, they they say maybe perhaps they open too soon. Uh, as if Florida Governor DeSantis there uh, was making a big deal of the, a month or so ago about how everybody was overreacting. Now Florida's going through the roof. Oh yeah, yeah. Texas I'm going through the roof, and I just feel so sad because I'm hearing all these personal stories. You know, just recently, a, a 30 year old guy, um, his last words were, uh, "You know, I thought this whole thing was a hoax, and I guess I made a mistake. It isn't. That was his. La it's real." He said that was his last words. So when you hear it on a one on one basis like that, you just can't help but to be heartbroken for these families who didn't take it seriously uh, soon enough. Yeah, no kidding. And I, I, I read something that if um, if Florida was its own country, uh, its case count um, would be the fourth largest in the world if Florida I was its own. I saw that. Yeah. I, I, unbelievable. And, I, and uh, people are saying we're not even toward, we're not even spiked yet. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets better, in other words. And it's heartbreaking because I also feel for the businesses that are failing because they're not open. And some of them will be shuttered forever now. And I, I feel badly, but we got to keep people alive. Otherwise, there is no business. There is no economy. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's how I feel about it. People ask me all the time. I try not to get overly political, I, but I just don't understand how wearing a mask is a political position. You, you want to be safe, you know, and, the, and the, these people uh, who fought for us in World War II, what they had to do, and they were kids, a lot of them, uh, what they did to keep us uh, free and to fight for them. All we have to do is put on a mask and stay away from people. I, I don't understand why the great resistance, but I'm sure they're out there who are going to make it, people are going to make a case 
and they're going to make comments and write in and say, how do you have that guy in there, that stupid Hollywood liberal? I, I just want everybody to be alive and happy. That's not too much to ask, is it? No, I, I uh, amen. I 100% agree with that. It's just, it is, it is absolutely crazy what, you know, you, you, can, you can get so um, pent up and angry about it, but I tend to want to just get back and say, okay, you know what? La, 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 la. Yeah, I'm wearing my mask. I'm doing my thing. And uh, we've got we've got to just have a bit of sense of reality. Yeah. But you've been on um, uh, a journey, obviously, the non-Hodgkin uh, lymphoma um, cancer thing. But I want to move back, go back in time before Booze Prowler, before L.A. You were you were um, living in Boston and um, that journey eventually took you to L.A. Uh, and in Hollywood. And then, then to then to Booze Traveler. What what um, tell us about Boston and what happened back there? And maybe what what were you doing b um, before Booze Traveler? Well, as a kid, I shined shoes to make money. Uh, my mom was a single parent of a couple of kids, me and my youngest sister, and uh, we didn't have a lot of money. And uh, I asked for a shoe shine box for my ninth birthday, which happens to fall on Christmas Day. So she combined the presents. She was really good about that normally. She'd make sure I got both a birthday and a Christmas present. Um, but in this case, I said, just put them together because I wanted a really cool shoe shine box. So I'd go out there and make money. So I'd shine shoes in the bar rooms of South Boston on West Broadway. And uh, I couldn't wander too far from, from where we grew up, the D Street Projects. But just enough because there's so many bars there. Uh, and I, <laughs> I made, for a kid, I made a good living. I charged 10 cents at the time because I'm old. And I went up to a quarter. And I was so afraid. To, to go up to, I thought they were going to say, hey, it was 10 cents last week. They didn't bat an eye. And I said, oh, I could have been charging the quarter the whole time. But for a little kid, the money was important right. for me. But even more so, now that I'm older, the great stories people would tell me when they had a couple of drinks, they became more social, not as guarded, maybe. You know, it was a poor and very tough neighborhood back in the day and uh so you wouldn't say it was uh eh, paris during the, <laughs> during the 30s and everybody's happy and one of them <laughs> before the nazis came in of course uh it wasn't uh, the the roaring 20s and 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 so to have a people to have someone come in and have a couple of drinks and then i see how they treat me different than they would on the street you know they loosen up and they give me a quarter and say hey let me tell you this story or try this whiskey which I didn't tell my mother about, but uh, I didn't like it when I was a kid. It was too strong. I said, why would people drink that? But I understood what it did for them. Mm -hmm. And they would tell me these great stories of adventure and travel, sometimes just to the other side of the state, maybe. Yeah. You know, not a lot of them went out of the country. But I remember one guy went to Canada, and he was telling me about this land called Canada and how there were <laughs> French people up there. I said, but it's not France. I didn't understand but I was so fascinated and then I grow up or at least get old. I don't think I grew up and I auditioned for this show and I said, I understand that. I understand the love of alcohol and travel and adventure. And they were, uh, I guess, stupid enough to give me the show. So I, I was very happy to do it and do what I could for four years traveling. Like you say, it's about 60 countries, six continents. It was the gift of a lifetime. Um, before that, what did I do? Oh, I, I try to be a lumberjack, uh, but I couldn't cut it. So they gave me the ax. Um, <laughs> and then, then that didn't work. So they fired me. I guess that was, that was a, a hatchet job, really. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I, I worked for um, Campbell's Soup uh, as, as a young adult. I uh, worked in the alphabet soup division. Uh, one year I made over 250 Gs. Uh, and that, was, that was a lot, you know, at the time, you know. Uh, and then, oh, I, I worked in a factory that made calendars uh, until I got fired for taking a couple of days off. Uh, <laughs> but when I left, I stole the calendar, got 12 months. But, uh, well, actually, it was one of my calendars. It was a few days, you know, like a little less than that because it's one of mine. But uh, at the time, I was uh, practicing tongue twisters, so I wasn't afraid of a tough sentence. Uh, and, you know, other things like that until I finally <laughs> decided to try acting and hosting. Oh my goodness, man! Now, what about some stand-up? Uh, we got <laughs> never. No, no. I, I'm not funny. I don't uh, know. 
I think there are brilliant stand-ups out there. So many of them. I think this stage is crowded enough. I'll just travel and have a couple of cocktails. Hey, um, let, let's do this. I want you to. I'm going to show an um, uh, uh, episode, portion of an episode from um, Booze Traveler for those who have who are on the uh, call. In fact, I'm going to go put a poll up. We're just. Uh, uh, it looks like most people have have been on this that are joining us today, according to at least the people that answered the polls, have been on uh, Journey's webcast. Thank you. We've got uh, AJ from uh, India coming in. Oh, hey, Chris, AJ. Yeah, he's 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 been on since um, Leon Logothetis, the Kindness Diaries guy, and uh, really good. Brian Young back with us. Chris, thanks for tuning in. Let us know. Put us in the chat realm. You've got any questions for uh, Jack? Uh, put them in there. Um, I'm gonna go play this video. You'll um, get a cocktail, and we're gonna toast to uh, to to the future here. Absolutely. How long do I have? Um, uh, I'll wait till you see you come back. I'm just because this is the whole whole clip and we'll uh we'll when you come back i'll, I'll stop it because it's pretty good i love 60 this clip. seconds I'll be you back. got it okay all right he's back get, where did you get that clip i can't i haven't seen that in forever i found that on youtube somewhere tucked away um because it, you know we, we just celebrated pride week or pride month is it going on right you know right, yeah you know, that's right so i so i thought that that, that the drag queen olympics that uh you know, these are the kinds of things that you, you get to do. Oh, that was yeah. fun. All of that. It was really, uh, I, I believe that was Austria, if I remember correctly. Um, but it, it every, said Am Amsterdam, I think. Oh, Amsterdam. Uh, That's right. I'm yeah. sorry. Amsterdam. Every, uh, every country had their just, their, their own wonderful, memorable thing about it that you wouldn't necessarily attach to it, maybe like that. I didn't know Amsterdam that was going to be happening. Certain festivals, what I mean, like you, you said it yourself, hot air ballooning in Lithuania. I, I, I didn't know that was going to happen. Who, who associates those two things? So it was not only what people would do if they went there, of course, and in the eating and the drinking and and uh, figuring out why they drank things and 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 of course listening to their stories once they did, but also what they loved to do. It was it was great because I was never a tourist, always just a traveler, a curious adventurer, and uh, oh, I got to do so many things, and it was, it was really great. Uh, but to 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 toast oh, yeah. you, thank you for giving me time to do that. Um, so what are we drinking? This is a whiskey ginger. I had to make up something quick. By the way, your microphone's very good because you because it was on and we could hear you with the ice and the thing. It was all going oh, no on. As, yeah, yeah. And well, even maybe the, I'm too loud then. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey. I, okay. So whiskey ginger. Um, I'm. Um, I've I've got a um, a wine. This is a uh the it's a California wine. It's it's Arno Roberts of the producers, but it's the grape is Falangina which oh. is a grape unique to Campania in Italy. And there's very few of it uh, planted. It's an ancient grape. It's a indigenous to Italy. Actually, they think the Greeks might have done it. But this is the only vineyard in California planted with Falangina. It's, I don't know how much they've got planted, but uh, it's kind of a, a great hot day uh, thing. So cheers to you, Jack. Cheers to you. Let me just try to fix that for you so we can see you better. Salud. Okay, here, um, yeah, let's, yeah, we can kind of do this, but then I'm going to, I want to just ask you, who's this guy right here? What's going on here? Oh, that was fun. You know, I, on the show, I, I have to take it back a little bit, and then I'll explain, please leave that photo up, and I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. On the show, we had so many guests who would come on from around the world who weren't quite used to being on camera. So they would be nervous, or maybe they didn't speak English well, and then that would make them nervous. So I just started making fun of myself. And the easiest way to do that is, you know, with a stupid pun or a lie or whatever. And, and then they would laugh and feel better or they'd say, oh, this isn't hard. This guy is stupid. You know, he's, he's ridiculous. So uh, I think people started expecting that. And there were these drinking games when they would watch the show, uh, or at least this is what people tell me in Booze Traveler chat rooms and on social media or what have you. Not really chat rooms. I don't think those exist anymore. But group <laughs> would get together on Facebook and what have you. And they would do shots, uh, either in person or virtually uh, get together, when I would do a stupid pun. or what, and, then, and whoever didn't get it had to do two puns. There's all kind of different rules. So with this, I just put that up for July 4th. And I said, 
a cocktail and a fire works for the fourth. <laughs> it's and and I only because people saying, "Hey, you haven't been doing a lot of puns on social media lately." So I really stretch uh, sometimes. So I I don't know. Like today there was there was a cute panda eating bamboo, and it was so loud and crunchy. It was great, and so I retweeted it and said, "I don't want to panda to the crowd, but this is better than ASMR." It was just such a cool, crunchy, fun thing, and he was enjoying it so much. And I think that's what I did around the world. Whenever someone was drinking something that they made and they were so into it, I was really uh, interested in them. They were so interesting uh, when they were enjoying that. And, and mm -hmm. think about that. When you see someone really enjoying something, it's fascinating. So that's why I retweeted the panda. Because whether it's a an animal or a person, or whatever, I love when people love something, and to me that means that means something. So therefore, that's to be celebrated. Yeah, cheers to that. Uh, so, so you've you've had a lot of let's talk let's talk booze. Uh, you've had a lot of crazy drinks, um, and um, I'm I'm curious. You know, you I'm sure you've told stories hundreds of times uh, about something wacky, or or maybe even something just real delicious. Um, what what kind of what kind of things do, uh, do you remember from your travelers around the world to to some of these crazy places? Oh yeah, you know if you're talking about just the drinks, I always appreciated the art of mixology. So we were at a place called Momix in Athens, and they just turned it into a whole wonderful experience. It's so I mean you have to watch the the Greek episode, the Greece episode of a booze traveler to see exactly what they were doing and dry ice and this thing they pour and it turns into jelly and uh, little balls of thing in the drink and just the different sensations, the taste and the smell and the sight and the sound, the color, all of it. It was just it's 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 so great what people can do with ingredients and also make it taste good. And it still has give you the buzz of alcohol. I just, it, to me, I appreciate that very much. I know it's uh, difficult to make beer, wine, things like that. But I love cocktails and, and how they're made. So some of my best experiences were from cocktails, also beer and wine. But for instance, Mr. Ueno, uh, uh of Tokyo has been designated the world's greatest bartender, I think more than once. And he took me to his bar high five. Uh, and made me two of the best drinks I had. Uh, and they were just really wonderful how he did it. And he doesn't even drink. He picks out the ice. Uh, we went to a factory that makes ice and he picks it out and rejects most of it. And I helped carry it back to his bar and the, it wasn't open yet because it was early in the day and he just sat there and made me a couple of drinks. And he always dresses impeccably with a tie and a suit. And he said he doesn't drink and it just, how, how? I said, how do you then taste it? How do you know? He says, I just know. I can feel it. I, it's just like Beethoven being deaf and still being able to compose music. He's just fascinating. And those drinks were some of the best. So things like that, I think, around the world. Of course, there's been the other side of it. You know, I had to drink. Uh, didn't have to. I was happy might be too strong a word. I was honored to be able to drink some of the things I did from people uh, like Cow's Blood, uh, with the Maasai warriors in Tanzania, or uh, Frog in a Blender in Peru, or uh, Spit Beer in the Amazon. Uh, there's been some crazy things. Uh, stuff with that flies were on just a few minutes before that. <laughs> banana beer and all of this stuff uh, out out in the boonies. But I, I, I enjoyed the experience because it's never about the drink. It's always about what you take from it and the people that you're with. Uh, so here's to that, man. I know you feel uh, the same way. You've done a lot of the same things. Here's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you. So this is this is a good good tee off to my next little video clip. I'm going to play because you have drank with some um, some amazing people. Sometimes the ordinary are the most extraordinary. But then you've also had the opportunity to toast and drink with uh, with famous people as well. So we'll, let me tee this cup and we'll talk about it at the back end. Sure. Okay, uh, that's not the video, but that's uh, that's a little cheater here. Okay, where is it? Well, well. 
I guess I don't have that queued up. Now, that's very disappointing. Well, that's okay. You probably, I don't know what the rights <laughs> usage is. Are anyway. Yeah, there, there you go. So tell us about I don't know that. I uh, even show the clip, to be honest. But that, yeah. oh, that was such a great experience with Stephen Colbert. He was such a nice guy. Uh, he came into my dressing room as uh, I was getting ready to do a show and said, you got the greatest job in the world. I said, I don't know if it's the greatest job in the world, Stephen, but it's the best job I've ever had. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> And he was just very generous with his with his time and easy to talk to. And, you know, to have a cold beer with cold beer was great. And uh, some of the things, you know, he, uh, he he just really played along. There was this mojito from uh, Costa Rica. No, um, from, oh, I forget where it was. Uh, we, the ants from Santander was that, I don't think it was Cuba. Um, uh, ant butt mojito, maybe Colombia. There you go. And uh, and the little ant butts you put on the drink, and he was eating them, and he said, "Oh, this is it likes the butt of an ant, but they look like little crunchy things." Then he looked at me, and said, "Oh no, what, what what if what if I'm allergic?" And what I didn't say was, but I should have said, "Well, then you just take an ant ass it, I guess. I don't know." <laughs> uh, but he was just so fun to play around with, and uh, some of the things he was drank this uh, deer blood vodka. He was just so game, and it was really an honor to be on that show. I really loved it. To this day, uh, one of the most fun experiences, not just to go on there to promote the show. He was just really cool. Wow, that's that's that that's that's very cool um, to 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 have that experience. You know, of course, he's so entertaining, so witty, so smart, um, so so cool. You know, you you seem to know a lot of details, Jack. You know, of different drinks, of your trips around the world. Do you have a photographic memory? Uh, well, I guess I do, but it just took a while to develop. <laughs> okay. now, I, I, I wouldn't say I have a photographic memory. I just think when you have a joyful experience, sometimes traumatic also, it gets seared into your memory. And for me to, to not uh, remember those things would be a shame, right? I know there'll be a day where they'll start to fade away, I'm sure, but it was so impactful uh, and, and I think that's the best way to honor that journey. This wasn't just a television show to do, just to do a show. It was about one man's experience traveling the world and, and the joy that he had meeting these wonderful people uh, and, and, and seeing the world. But it was always, like you said, about the stories, about the people when I came back. It wasn't about cathedral, mountain, monuments, museums, nothing. It was about the people and their stories. It was great to see these things like Machu Picchu or uh, the, you know, the London Dungeon or um, well, so many, the Eiffel Tower, so many, whatever you want to say, I don't know. But it was always the stories uh, that I came back with and the people like this, like sitting in a wine bath in Japan. Uh, although I, I made a bit of a social faux pas in there, certainly a Merlot point in my life, but it was a really great time. I thought it was gonna stain my skin. It doesn't for whatever reason, but it was great. And they were so sweet and nice and they were so curious about it all. The little kids diving down, just like you would in a pool here. And I don't know how they can see, but it's just it's just great. And they also have a sake bath and a green tea bath as well. That's that. I mean, looking at that, when I first saw this photograph, I thought, wow, I, is, could that be blood? You know, because of all the crazy things. But a uh, wine bath. Um, you know, I was in Moldova this past summer and there is a, a winery that they've invested. Uh, I, don't, I mean, it's 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 crazy amounts of money into this uh, thing. They, you know, this is one of those places where they have um, a, one of the wine cellars uh that you actually they drive trucks into and out there they're so uh it's so big it's like 36 miles underground but they're they are uh another another winery not that one is actually going to start offering wine baths but they weren't doing it when i was there so it's as much of a wine guy uh there you are um you gotta try that and also a beer bath in austria that was a blast beer bath yeah yeah um so here you are tell us about uh your buddy here yeah, he's giving me the side eye, isn't he? Uh, this, <laughs> this was in Israel, and uh, we didn't really have to take the camel like Lawrence of Arabia through the desert or anything. Um, mm -hmm. 
I, I just, it was just a thing to do. I mean, I thought that it would be a shame if I went to places and didn't take advantage of things that uh, I couldn't do here. I mean, I, they don't give camel rides too many places around here. So it was just great to just to hop on. And uh, it's so weird. It's they're so clumsy, klutzy. It was, it's not a smooth ride. It's very uh, bouncy, let's say, even more so than bouncy. But it was great because, you know, now I could say, I did it, but Israel was fascinating. We got to not only uh, float in the Dead Sea, um, but we also went to the the other side, to Palestine and, and Bethlehem, and talked to the people there about the other side. And you know what I got from, from both sides? And I don't like to do this to, to say everything's equal and it's both sides. It's, it's, this is not what I'm saying. But I am saying the people I spoke to on each side said almost the exact same thing, that I want to live in peace. I'm sorry they're trying to kill us. Almost word for word, think the other side tries to wants to kill them. And I know it's, it's government, obviously, that makes a lot of decisions about war and what have you. But uh, I, I found a wistfulness that, you know, they hoped that one day they'd find peace. And I'm sure the others, there are some, who don't want peace and want perpetual war until the other side is uh, banished from the earth. But most of the people I spoke to didn't have that uh, point of view at all. Yeah, it's uh, there. There was an artist I can't remember his name, but um, there was an installation. This is probably ten years ago um, where they posted two photographs uh, on the sides of buildings, and this is in multiple locations in the Palestinian side uh, and in the Israeli side. And they ask people, which one is the Israeli, which one is the Palestinian? And, you know, of course, you can't tell. I mean, we're all the same. We're people. Sure. We want the same things. We do that. Yeah. Um, I want to show another lesson I learned around the world, Alan, is yeah. that we have so much more in common than we do differences. And if we focus on the commonalities, it really brings us closer together. And, of course, when you have a drink with somebody, to me, uh, it, it just changes the dynamic. It's like a big liquid hug. It's like it's like reaching over and say, all right, we'll have a drink together. The, the guards come down and, and the walls come down and, and you just start communicating on a human level, which is the, the way we should do it anyway. Drinks and food are the great people connectors. Uh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, well, I'm going to go and. Uh, top off because I was uh, I, I give myself a bit too shy of a pour there Jack oh <laughs> go ahead I'll host the show for a couple of minutes okay. Hi, you're watching no I'm just kidding I'll wait for you <laughs> no no it's good I just got it um so um there, there's another place you went to we're, we're coming to come to our own country a lot of times especially in this lockdown you know the the blue passport that we have now the American passport used to be it was like carte blanche, you know, you, you know, it's the, the best passport to have to travel the world. We, we don't know how lucky we have been as Americans um, that we can go to places that that is very difficult for other people in other countries to go to. But right now we're not anymore. The, the, the borders are closed on us. And yeah, that's, that's really crazy. You know, so, I, I just saw a sign in, uh, outside of a London bar that said all Americans must be accompanied by an adult. And it's, it's just sad to think that uh, once the ambassadors of the world now are being shunned uh, for multiple reasons, and I guess the people who are doing it can, can tell you why. I, I wouldn't uh, try to fathom a guess, but part of it is, of course, the way we're, we're handling this and that we have so many cases of, uh, of, of coronavirus, and it's not because we're being tested. We would still have the cases. We just wouldn't know about it and the way we're handling it. And so it's funny because... You know, everybody wanted to come to the States, uh, live the American dream. And I applaud that. And I'm, my family was a part of it. They came from Sicily or Ireland, depending on which side of the family we're speaking of. And, and now we're, we're being cloistered. I know a lot of people wanted to just stay in America and never want to travel, which is so sad. I mean, you don't have to be Magellan, but see the world. And, and now we can't. And I just think uh, I just think it's a shame. Yeah, it it. it it, it is a shame, and I. Um, so I, I've been fond to to tell people, even though you know, right now maybe maybe not the time. But when 
you know, make lemonade out of lemons, right? Look at what you're gaining, not what you're losing. And in our backyard right here, and I and and what we have is so many rich immigrant communities throughout the United States. I mean, look at New York, you know, speaking of Italian, Sicily, and um, you know, look at um um uh, the uh, Polish community in Chicago or the, sure. you know, you can find that, that those things that really make those cultures unique just about anywhere. And we have a lot of places in the States that um, a lot of people don't even know about that, that can be explored. So, so this summer, everybody's saying everybody's going to be, you know, people want to rent RVs. The RV thing is going crazy because, you know, they sure. can you know, they can kind of stay socially distanced in that way. But um, in Boost Traveler, you did do a few things uh, across the United States. And I want to show this photo. And this, to me, is one of those magical gems, perhaps, that um, and, and tell us about it, uh, that you can explore here in our backyard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just chilling. Actually, that is <laughs> one of the coolest places I've ever been to in my life. That's called Meow Wolf. It's in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's this wonderful art installation that challenges your perception of things. That is a hallway. And when you come out of the hallway, it looks like a refrigerator in a, in a 1950s or 1960s type of kitchen. And you could slide down uh, the dishwasher and you go into the fireplace and crawl up to something else. And there's people coming out of the woodwork and big guy playing a tuba and this little uh, woman uh, acting uh, silly and crazy. And then you look in the toilet and there's a little kid down in the well looking up to you. It's so fascinating and, and just innovative and imaginative. You, uh, it, we were lucky because they, they shut it down for us so we could film there and we got to go through it. And, and see so much of it. And then they let some people in. It was just wonderful. I would recommend it. Uh, someone uh, sent me something on social media saying they live close to Santa Fe. They've never been. And with the yeah. popularity of it now, uh, it's expanding to other cities. But uh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, because they captured that picture just like that, I had to use it for social media. Yeah, it is. It is. It is really cool. And I, I, I note that the, the new cookbook, that's leaning up against the the fridge there, um, which is something probably from the fifties, like you know, to match sure. the, match the decor. It's really, really kind of cool. So that, that that that's the that's the fun is uh, finding places in our own backyards. That yeah. uh, you know, like I, I love the USA. We have so much here, and it's funny if I say I love America. South American people say, no, no, America is all of us, and it's North America, and it's Canada. So I've learned to to say USA because truly that's what we are. But I love it here in the States because there's so much to do. And I, I could I could explore uh, here and be happy. But if you can see the world, why wouldn't you? Because as Mark Twain says, it's fatal, fatal to prejudice and closed mindedness and all this other stuff uh, because you see how other people are. And so many people have it worse than we do. And, and they're, they're better for it in a sense that they're grateful for what they have. And it makes me uh, truly grateful for the things I've been given because some people don't even have half or and even less around yeah. the world. Yeah, and, 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 and to dovetail right into that, it's, it's so funny. It's those people that have so little, though, you'll find as you travel the world, which is why you need to, are willing to give so much. Mm, uh, true. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you get to do all of this great stuff. You've traveled the world, but then, you know, you get, you get slapped, um, um, and have to take a hiatus to do this, this chemo. T tell us about that journey and, and, uh, and your, your, your recovery, your, your attitude. And of course the, the, I guess, I, I guess I call it the disappointment that you can't now continue to go, um, and, and take Boost Traveler to season five, six, and seven. Sure. Well, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, my oncologist, because it's slow growing, said, well, listen, you can, you can uh, uh, just see how it goes. And uh, I went on to do a couple more episodes, a couple of more uh, seasons of Boost Traveler. And then, and then we had to do something. So I, uh, I, I came to Phoenix and did chemo and, uh, couldn't do the show, uh, and and Travel Channel was uh, going in a little more paranormal ish direction, and uh, so the show wasn't going to go on anyway. And 
and I came out of that with a, just a t different point of view. So many people in there uh, had it way worse than me. You know, I call non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, at least for me, starter cancer because I, I beat it so easily. And mm. I don't know if that was maybe my the way I went in. I try to stay positive and, and, and again, not to overuse the word, but grateful that I had the opportunity I did with Booze Traveler and I still had my health and I was probably going to survive it, although you never know for sure. But mm. people in there didn't survive the chemo and, uh, you know, because I, I, I did it for a long time and they said, oh, this one passed away, uh, this one is, is on the way out. And it was really sad. And uh, you had to see that. With, with that, though, people coming in taking selfies because uh, they said, hey, isn't that Booze Traveler guy? Over there? What's he doing in there? And, and so we went to Us Weekly and did an exclusive uh, because I hadn't really broadcasted publicly that I was going through this. Uh, and then we did, and it was really wonderful because I, di I didn't understand how inspiring it can be for people going through the same thing. And I, I got so many uh, text messages and emails and social media posts and er any way someone could get a hold of me, they did, saying thank you for sharing your story. And it meant a lot to me to hear that, and that helped me get through it. But going in, I said, I'm going to stay positive. I can either complain or not. You know, we don't have control of too many things, but I think our choices about how we feel – we, we can really, in, in that sense, uh, maybe, uh, I, I don't want to say manufacture that, but, you know, if we truly feel that we're grateful for what we have, then something like that won't depress you, knock you down. I mean, in some cases it will. But for me, I was just going to stay positive and get through it all the best way I could. You can either complain about it or get through it. And so I did all these things like an actor would preparing for a part to get ready for this. I got an eye mask and I got my noise canceling headphones and put a beautiful instrumental song on there, 25 versions of what I thought was the, the, the most beautiful song ever, ever written and created. And uh, I got through it and they were surprised. You know, I had a nurse say to me, all this positive mumbo jumbo is not gonna work. You know, it's gonna hurt. Your eyes gonna feel like they're popping out and you're gonna get sick and all that. And and uh, I said, I know you think that. and. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to handle it the best way I can, and one of them finally said, "You know, it really works. This stuff because I I didn't get sick. They said you were gonna get nauseous, and I didn't. I got an adjustable bed because I thought I was gonna be thrown up at night, and I thought it'd be easy to get up to sleep like that. They said you're gonna lose your hair, and it's gonna come back white because you're old. Thanks a lot, but it didn't didn't fall out or anything. So I was very grateful for the treatments and the way it happened. And I know I use that word a lot, but I really mean it because if I didn't know I had cancer, I wouldn't know I had cancer. It was it was relatively easy, but I think the way you approach something uh, means everything. So I would say if you're going through something similar, if you want to reach out to me, you can. Uh, my Instagram and Twitter handle is Southie Jack S O U T H I E J A C K, uh, and 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 I'll I'll try to get back to you because I know it's not easy. I I, I know it's difficult. It's certainly not a walk in the park. But you can get through it. Um, it. Listen, if I can, anybody can, you know. And 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 a lot of people said to me, "Oh, just when you were getting going with booze travel, going around the world, this hits you." But I said the opposite, Alan. Mm -hmm. I said I got to do that right up until the point where I had to do something about that. I got to see the world, and then of course, Corona hits, and people aren't traveling. And I've yeah. never had more messages. Uh, since the show went off than I do right now during this. People who are saying they have wanderlust, they can't wait to travel again and be around people like we did on the show. And I appreciate all those messages. I know the show had an impact on people and it certainly had an impact on me. Wow, yeah, great, uh, great. I um, I, I wanna just, uh, uh, people are enjoying this conversation. I, I'm so great, I, I, I see, um, Chloe, uh, my aunt, speaking of aunts, she's tuned in and she, Hi, says, Chloe. That, <laughs> she says, this lightens my day. Margot Eaton um, is really um, uh, agreeing and everything. Doris says, enjoying this exchange. Ajay says, uh, and I don't know if I say that right. I don't want to say AJ because uh, I think AJ Foyt, you know, the old uh, Ajay Singh Rawat. You uh, love the USA too. So great to, to have you um, join us today. Um, I, I, 
I've got a, a friend of mine who's who's watching, and he's not commenting. He sent me a pri private note, and he just he he's um, had a great friend of his, a photographer, fashion photographer who lived in Boston, uh, and he was around the the, the creative and the arts community. Uh, whose name was um, I think it was Kim Kennedy, and he wanted me to ask you if you knew him. And and the reason I bring it up now because of what you just said is Kim was diagnosed, didn't know, got diagnosed, I guess, too late. He died about about ten years ago of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and he's a, another Boston guy um, in there. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. To his friends and family, I I don't know of him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's been such a wild journey, Jackie uh, Onassis died from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or complications from it. Certainly, uh, even in the last 10 years since Kim Kennedy died, uh, I, if that's how you say his name, yep. there've been advances. So it's not that I'm some uh, magical superhuman that I, that I didn't have these symptoms. I had good treatment. I was lucky enough to have that and a great oncologist and great nurses. Um, but yeah, it affects everybody differently. And it's the, uh, the complications after the fact, of course, uh, mm -hmm. cancer, wasn't really, you know, I, I didn't feel too much of that, but the chemo gets you uh, because it's this terribly strong poison going through your body. But I accepted it in, you know, everybody F cancer and fight it and this and that, and it's poison and get it out of your system as soon as you can. I, I did the opposite. I welcomed it in as you would if a stranger knocked on your door, perhaps, mm. or, or a stranger you knew was coming and maybe wanted to be friends with. I took it in in that way. I was hospitable as people were to me around the world, being a stranger, going to their homes uh, and, and being introduced to their friends and family. That's how I treated chemo, uh, as nice as people treated me. And I took it in and we had our visit and it did what it wanted to do. And then when it left, it was goodbye and uh, see you next time, old friend, until that was done. And, uh, and I, I think that made a difference, I really do. That's uh, that's all about attitude, isn't it, Jack? I mean, perspective and attitude, it, it can just change you. And yeah, and I'm having a little hair envy watching you here on this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and again, hey, it, Alan, it's pure luck. I'll be 58 years old this year. And I got a, I think, especially going through chemo, I got a pretty lucky head of hair there. Yeah, yeah, you, you've got the you've got the good genes for sure. Hey, um, it, it looks like that most of the people uh, tuning into the on the call today have not seen Booze Traveler. So this is a great opportunity to get to know Jack and um, and and see him. And I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to put up another uh, poll because I'm curious about cocktails and drinks since we're doing this and uh, people can do that while I queue up. Um, cause I want to talk about how you went through the chemo managed pain and a, and a new project you've got going. So watch this video. We'll talk about it on the back end. Ah, it's interesting. It's given me this. I've never seen it. Okay. Oh, I got to do a puff. I forgot. All right. Cause it is puff and paint, right? Paint and puff, baby. Paint and puff. My name is Jack Maxwell. I once had a job as the booze explorer. Here we go, here we go. But then I got sucker punched by cancer. I then started a whole new journey. Oh my God, is that good. The culture of cannabis. I have cancer, it doesn't have me. Come on, up on the magic bus with me and let's hit the high road. <laughs> Tyrone. What's going down, man? What's happening? Good to see you, How you baby. doing? Everything good? Complain. Everything's oh, gravy, man. I like what you've done with the place. You're going to sit right here? We're going to try this little painting, the butterfly. I have to paint that? You got to paint that. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that. Are but you kidding me? You ain't going to be able to paint it without vapor, so pick up your vape first. Let's go ahead and get some vape on, baby. How you want to puff? You want to puff heavy or puff light? <laughs> What's going to help me paint better? Let's puff heavy, baby. That's right. That's how you're going to create this masterpiece. Let's paint. Let's paint, baby. Does that look like a butterfly to you? No. It looks like a Rorschach test. <laughs> so right. now you're going to go ahead and get your paintbrushes out. Oh, now we can graduate. I might now need another puff for that. So paint and puff, man. The high road. What, you know, you go from one cool project to the next, but um, and, and uh, this is obviously new 
new journey. CBD, cannabis, you know, yes, it's legal in California and Denver now. Uh, is it legal in Arizona? Only medicinally. 11 states allow it recreationally and 33 allow it medicinally as of right now. And that is probably one of the most unique projects I've ever been involved with because it, it, it wasn't a project first. Usually as an actor or a host, we auditioned for things as I did for Booze Traveler and they gave it to me. Uh, but this was different. When I went through cancer and chemo, uh, I had a lot of pain from neuropathy, nerve pain, which is can be very severe and intense for those who had it. And uh, so I went to a, my doctor and he sent me to a pain specialist and pain specialist among others recommended I try CBD and medicinal marijuana, THC. And I did it in tinctures, I'm not a smoker. Uh, and, and it really worked. So I said, huh, because I wasn't a user before that. And as I say, and I said many times, it's because my father was a drug addict and I don't want to turn into that in case I had that, you know, a genetic predisposition towards it or something like that. So um, it was interesting to, to me because I, I said, wait a minute, you know, you don't hear a lot about this stuff uh, in certain circles and other people demonize it. And, and so I thought it would be great to go around the United States and, you know, cause I spent the last four years before that seeing the world, I thought, how about here at home, get stories from people who have found great results uh, for whatever their affliction was using CBD and maybe even medical marijuana. And I was surprised because a lot of people who hated the thought of ever using cannabis now tried it, and I think the game changer was CBD, which is not the part that gets you high. Uh, Hemp-derived CBD has less than 0.3% THC. THC is the THC is the thing that is psychoactive. So that's ma marijuana, or now they, they're calling it cannabis. But but CBD does not do that, and uh, but it's anti-inflammatory and and it helps with anxiety and helps you sleep. So I tried it all. And other people, I'm talking about older people, people from red states, people who are very religious, have turning to this CBD and then THC because whole leaf therapy is better than isolating it uh, from what I understand. And uh, so then we explore the whole culture of cannabis around the US. It's not a stoner show or anything like that. It's basically from the wellness point of view. And our, our friends at Wellness uh, Vertical Wellness partnered with us on this and uh, we're great, grateful uh, to them for that because uh, we're letting people understand that it's probably not what you thought it was. <laughs> and, uh, starting with the history of it, 1937, and why that was done for economic reasons, not really health reasons, as they said, and for racial reasons, unfortunately. If you go back and read the story, don't listen to me, go back and look up Harry J. Ansplain and all of that. So. Uh, it, it's been a great and fascinating journey for me, and so many people are being helped by it. And I'm not trying to sell anything. I, there's no infomercial or anything like that. Yeah. It's just I, I love when people uh, open their minds about something, and uh, you know they have new possibilities in their lives because I think it makes your life better to be more open-minded than closed-minded for sure. Yeah, that uh, you know, a um, an open mind is. Um is a gem that's for sure because when you close you know you become your worst enemy because you just don't have that ability to um see a different perspective and that's the for your way. mind the rest will follow right that's it yeah <laughs> yeah well i'm just looking at um uh, we're going to come back to to cannabis and uh and then a second but i just put up a poll about to see what people drink out there and it looks like scotch gets the highest score of our attendees today um 25% say that's their, their booze of choice. Uh, and, 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 uh, 25% actually don't drink. So there are, there are some, uh, teetotalers on here, which is all just fine. You know, it's up to, up to you, whatever, whatever you, whatever works for you, for you sure. Know, it's really nice, Alan. When, when people would reach out and say, I watch your show, but I don't drink, but your show is a celebration of people and culture. I thought it was just about getting drunk around the world, which it wasn't. And, no. and so it was a great compliment when people who don't imbibe uh, still enjoy the show for the culture of it and the travel and the humanity of it. That's really great. And on the other side of that, uh, Scotch was one of my uh, one of my greatest experiences. Went to the Ca McAllen Estate in, in Scotland 
and uh, I had some scotch that they had saved. Uh, they said for me because they knew I was coming. Part of a, a batch that sold a six liter decanter sold for six hundred thirty one thousand dollars the year or two before that. And they gave me a little sip of it, and it was just magical. <laughs> $100,000 plus per oh, liter. Six. Yeah, oh, yeah, per liter, sure. 631000 for the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure that was, must have been. Um, not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to kind of end that poll. Now, um, we're, we're, we're at the hour mark. I'm gonna, can, can I keep you on here for a few minutes more? There's a couple of little questions. And, uh, you know, we, we had a, a little bit of a hiccup there at the beginning. Are you okay for a couple more minutes? Sure. Okay, cool. Because uh, let, me, let me go. Um, I, I want to show another clip from um, the, the High Road because I love that. Of course, that name fits right into Jack's personality here, of course, the High Road, you know. Um, but um, you, you, you mentioned the, you know, you, I, just a side show. As you know, I had a show uh, or a pilot rather that did air on Travel Channel here, and um, and and things have changed over there quite a bit. Do we? You, you mentioned already as paranormal. Do we even recognize it as a travel focused kind of a, a network anymore? I mean, it, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I I know that some like History Channel wasn't history anymore, and. Uh, bravo, how it started out in that time. You know, for me, I, I think it's all okay. I think network executives under a great deal amount of pressure to deliver ratings and therefore advertising dollars. Travel Channel, I will always uh, certainly hold them in high regard for what they did for me. They gave me the greatest job uh, one could have for four years. And when they decided to alter their programming for their own good reasons, I'm sure, sure, uh, some shows got kicked off uh, the docket. But that's that, that's how it goes. You know, people uh, always come up to me and say, ah, oh, look at this travel channel, this travel channel. How can they do that and bring back booze travel? And all? Stupid go shows or whatever they're saying. You know, apparently this is what people want. So you have to give them what they want. Where It's a consumer-driven business. And if people are saying they want these kinds of shows, well, good for them. For me, I'm into a different kind of spirits. So I'll uh, I'll stay on this <laughs> journey as long as I can, and we'll see how it goes. That's pretty cool. Um, th there's a, uh, a couple um, – I, I, I want to ask you about um, – there's two questions that relate coming back to travel, knowing that we're kind of in lockdown. But um, uh, there, there are a lot of – because – the, the show, you, you chemo, and then just the direction of the Travel Channel change. Are there places that were on the docket that you really wanted to go to? Or are there just places that you just, you, you, you know, are high on Jack's list that you haven't been to? Because you've been almost everywhere. Where do you want to go? Yeah, thankfully, you know, 60 countries, that's, it's, it's not the whole world. You know, as, as the saying goes, I haven't been everywhere, but it's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would have loved to see more of the world. Uh, you know, Bali, uh, Indonesia, uh, Greenland. We went to Iceland. Uh, Canada. We didn't film in Canada, oddly enough. Uh, uh, the, the rest of South America, some of the places we didn't go to. We hit six out of the seven continents. And... Uh, the only reason we didn't go to Antarctica is because penguins don't make moonshine. But if they did, I'm sure, we, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure we would have been there, unless they're hiding their stash. Uh, more places in Africa, I would have loved to have gone. Uh, you know, we, we hit most of the places on my wish list, but we, we still missed a few. Yeah, wow. Um, so what's the one thing you would like to do around the world, um, no matter where you are? You know, it was great when when we had the uh, the the one day off per per country. Uh, I always like to explore, also rest, but but see things uh, as not as the host of the show, but just go off and do my own thing. And I love zoos and uh, the different animals they would have that they wouldn't have in other places uh, was fascinating to me. Although one of the countries I forget what it was, uh, they called it a zoo, but all they had was one dog. It was a shit zoo, uh, but but the snack bar was good. So uh, you know, so that that's good. But you know, 
most of the places have these exotic animals and uh you know you, you can get closer to some than others we were in uh maybe that was it the czech republic chesky krumlov i think it was maybe the specific city uh, i forget now but this guy had this backyard that was you know you could look down into it and he had a bear a wild bear <laughs> and it just, he, he came into the house and he had a cage and he went through the cage at my cameraman and almost got him uh, he's wild big and he would the guy would go in there and play with him and everything else and you know that was his zoo his version of it so i mean i love animals always have and sometimes went in the wild and saw some uh we caught a several snakes or, or the people handling them did uh my fixers my my local crew would do that but we saw some really beautiful wild exotic jaguars and and belize that we wanted to stay away from because they can be deadly some gorgeous bright colored birds uh wild animals just walking past monkeys in so many different places whether they were baboons or uh different kind uh you know mama sets and, and what have you oh, yeah. uh it, it was just and i love monkeys i just think they're great chimps wild i uh, never saw gorillas unfortunately we didn't get to uganda or, or places like that but i'd love to just sit next to a silverback family and just uh, just observe them that'd be great i had i was in rwanda and i had an opportunity i spent about 40 Seven minutes, I think, is what they, what they told me at the end, uh, with the silverback and uh, and a couple of and his, his wives and his family and his family. Yeah, just they were just, of course. What did the animals do? They just are eating that uh, the the branches of the trees, drinking water from them. Some of the bamboo there. It was just magical. Um, and it's funny yeah. because uh, sure. uh, there was there were two women from Canada. There was me and another guy, and actually our guide. Uh, his name was Francois, and he was um, um, who's the woman um, um, that uh, was the her, in the mist. Yeah, the I mean, um, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm drawing a blank. You know, it's the it's the Monday afternoon thing. But anyway, he was her assistant. You know, and she got she was murdered by the um, oh by, by the, the poachers. That's right. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, terrible story, but yeah, those gorillas. I, I, I'm like you. You know, one of my earlier guests on this uh, show uh, tuned in from Ecuador. He's an expat. He's chosen to live in Ecuador, and he's a writer and he's a speaker. You don't um, mean Jane Goodall because she's still around. You mean not Jane? Other? No, um, uh, uh, Diane Fossey. Diane, Diane Fossey, right? Diane Fossey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and. Um, Oh yeah. So, but but uh, in one of the earlier journeys webcasts, I had a guy, uh, Jeff Sauls, Doctor Jeff Sauls. He's an anthropologist, and he had just written an article before he was on my show here about pangolins, yeah. um, and about how he was tying potentially uh, there because they they they're sold. You know, in uh, we could ask Andrew Zimmer, and maybe he's tried them before, but they're sold in those markets in. Uh, in China, you know, uh, as a delicacy, as a aphrodisiac, as a, uh, you know, ED, uh, <laughs> a drug, but, um, yeah, animals, there's, there, there's so many, you know, so many, um, cool things that, uh, you can see. So that's a, that's a great way to, to, to take your day off in, a in a country. So, you know, it, Okay, moving, moving, moving past some animals. Let's let's move into what what is it? What is a cocktail bar going to look like here in the U.S. in as as we eventually and 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 how will it change um, post pandemic? What do you think? What do you see? Well, you know, I, 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 I every time I guess about what's going to happen, I'm wrong. There's so much misinformation out there, and and again, I I just wish we would have done a a better job on the national level. To, uh, to inform people and keep them safe. And I just think politics play too big a part in it, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to see anybody die on either side of the aisle. I don't, I don't want to see people get hurt. So I, I couldn't possibly guess because there are businesses that are failing, bars going under. I mean, are they going to allow us in with masks uh, a year from now? Maybe it will, does it go away or does it just mutate and it's worse? Do we not have bars anymore? Do we drink at home? Do you just invite your close friends and family to be around you? We become more isolated, more tribal. I certainly hope not, because one of the great joys of my life has been to travel and to travel to bars, not just people's homes and things like that, and to sit there among strangers and have this common experience. 
to have a drink with them. So I, I can't imagine what it's going to look like. I just know it's going to be different until we get the all clear signal. Who knows when that will be? But I, I miss it already, Alan. I really yeah. do. So I hope we get back to a semblance of, of normalcy somehow. Yeah, the, my, my favorite thing is you know, I, I live alone. I travel alone. I do a lot of things alone. But, I, you know, I, when I get people together, with one of the best experiences for me is there's a little bistro and a wine shop kind of in one uh, here in my, my hometown that I, I love to go and, and to, to have a meal. But I, I always like to be served at the bar. I like to talk with the bartender. And I always you start interacting with the strangers that then become friends around you. And, you know, I can't think of the last time I did that, you know, January, February. Uh, yeah. Um, I want to play a little bit more of, um, of Hit the High Road and talk about that and then talk about Jack's Place. And then we can kind of wind this up. And uh, uh, th th this is really funny. I, I loved this segment right here on um, Hit the High Road. And guys, you can see Hit the High Road on YouTube. Just Google that, Jack Maxwell. But here's a little bit. Um, I'll play from that. Uh, from that clip uh let's see how do i do that like this we have permitted 82 facilities 82 82 and meaning we have what kind of everything everything from manufacturing cultivation a lab my name is jack maxwell i once had a job as the booze explorer here we go here we go but then i got sucker punched by cancer i then started a whole new journey oh my god is that good the culture of cannabis. I have cancer, it doesn't have me. Come on, up on the magic bus with me, and let's hit the high road. <laughs> Come along with me on this high road. I'm headed for Las Vegas, and I only made it out to Needles. I had to see what all the buzz was about in this California town of 5,000 people near the confluence of Arizona and Nevada. It's run by a progressive thinking mayor who was an ex-cop, by the way. At one time, you're Johnny Law. Right. Deputy Sheriff. Yes. How do you go from that to mayor? And what's that like? California's changed their rules, and I had to get educated. It took me a while, but I worked on it. Needles was at one point almost a ghost town, but it welcomed the cannabis industry with open arms. And now, it's an economic player. Why did they pick Needles, of all places? Nothing against Needles. It just yeah. seems a little random at first. Instead of it being personnel, it's a major money draw on this industry. It's electricity. You see, it takes a lot of power to grow cannabis indoors. And Needles, while well, they have their own power grid, while other municipalities charge 25 to 35 cents per kilowatt, Needles charges only a fraction of that. Our electric rates are fantastic. They're between 6 and 11 cents a kilowatt. We have permitted 82 facilities. 82? 82. And Meaning we have what? Kind of everything? Everything from manufacturing, cultivation, a lab, 758,000 square foot of buildings are going up. How many jobs does that translate to? Over 500. 500 jobs. You could be governor. Okay, so basically build it and they will come. Wow, I mean, I mean, needles. We've all, anybody who's done a road trip cross country has ended up in needles, usually just to get a fill up for some fuel. Sure. What, what's going on in needles? Yeah, it was so great. I love, I love stories of revival, a phoenix rising from the ashes and needles had become basically a de facto ghost town um, and because things change, right? And uh, mm. but cannabis has, has brought it back, like you, like it, he, uh, that was Mayor Jeff Williams, and uh, they have their own power grid, so it was very attractive to companies going in there, and it just really turned the whole town around. And in a a, a town of five thousand, five hundred jobs added is quite a bit. So <laughs> it, it, uh, it has, I think, the lowest uh, unemployment rate in in California, or even uh, in other parts of the nation as well. It's just it's just booming. I don't know to what extent um, that's going to last, but I hope it does, certainly. And again, this stigma attached to it all. I, I don't understand why. If people can use something uh, and it's natural and not suffer from whatever they're suffering, from, from, uh, pain is, is, is a, in some ways, it's a great clarifier, but it also makes you do things maybe you wouldn't do. I mean, uh, you know, one of the projects that, uh, you know, I'm very aware of is the Stop 22 tour where this uh, Marine, Stephen Cochran, is, is trying to uh, raise money and, and he's a musician. He's trying to play for uh, uh, 
service people, who, men and women, who uh, they're killing themselves at a rate of 22 a day, roughly. And uh, there's just no need for that. I mean, I understand it's because of pain and PTSD and everything, but let's help them is what I'm trying to say. Let's help them stay alive and to have good lives because of everything they're doing for us. So, uh, you know, needles is the economic side of that and how it's helping people uh, because, you know, with the economies in, in, in shambles are at least headed that way now with the virus and how it's been handled and, and, and everything else. I do want to clear up one thing on there. I know it's, it says I used to host the show Booze Explorer. I, I think the production company decided to do that. They wrote that opening voiceover because for legal purposes, even though you can say it and we all can say it. Yeah. It yeah. was actually called Booze Traveler. I don't want anybody to think I forgot the name of the show. The show, but I think for legal purposes, we weren't supposed to say it. Although it doesn't seem to make sense, I'm sure we could say it. I'm saying yeah. it now. I used to host Booze Traveler. Yeah, so, I, I, I'm saying it too. He used to host Booze Traveler. Hey, um, just so you know, 60% of our audience t tuned in right now, live audience, uh, has tried medicinal uh, cannabis or CBD or even recreational. 20% wow. 20 say not yet, and then 20% say never. So there, there are a couple of those. Uh, you know, those blockers, but, uh, well, but that's okay. You know, you know if you don't, okay. to, as long as you're fully informed about anything in life before you decide to or not to, but don't be afraid of the boogeyman, the monster under your bed, turn on the light, look under there. It's a bunch of dust bunnies. Realize the truth about something before you decide about, it. because if you do that, and I learned this lesson around the world, of course, I think I was open-minded beforehand, but even more so after traveling the world, that breaks down the barriers between us as people, which is the most important thing. Prejudging something, therefore prejudice, goes away if we take it on an individual basis and learn all about it, not just what it looks like. Yeah, and you already admitted before that you had never, because of your father, we've talked about that, um, you never tried marijuana he's never gonna be you promised your mom um but you had an experience here in nepal I'm put i'm putting up a, a photo right here tell us about this yeah these guys were fascinating the babas uh they invited me into their circle and they uh, offered me bung lassi and the producer said yeah you don't have an experience with this it might make you a little wacky and i said but i'm here how can i come to Kathmandu, Nepal, to Monkey Temple, to be invited to sit with Babas and not take part of what they do. Why would I do that? Let's do it. You think it's safe? And then the fixer ran over and said, Jack, I tried this last year. I was out for six days. Please don't do it. <laughs> and I said, well, I got to do it. You know, uh, we have a day off tomorrow. I'll try to recover. Uh, and these guys are, uh, are great. Look at the one who's looking at me. Like, I don't know what he's looking at me like, but uh, I didn't realize till after I saw the photo. But these guys have been this way for decades. They gave up their lives of, of uh, material goods and, and other things to, to be, in their words, religious and to practice spirituality. And part of that is grinding up uh, cannabis and mixing it with nuts and seeds and uh, milk uh, to make a bang lassi. And it was strong. It definitely affected me. I'll tell you that. But it was a great experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, it's I I I'm you know I've not yet to be in a visit Nepal, but looking at this photo and and of course you do look a little. Oh, is this before or after the Bangladeshi? Yeah, wonder. that's after. I think that was the. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool. Um, I'm going to show another slide here. Um, whoops. Well, wait, that one I'm going to come back to. I wanted to show this one, and then we're going to close on that last one. Um, I, I, you know, I did my research. I found out, you know, uh, first of all, the, 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 you can tell the photo on the left. Tell us about that. And then the photos on the right. Sure. The one with the guys, that was uh, in Havana. Just walking down the street, there was a, a, a street band just playing, and they invited me in to mess around with them, which is great. You know, how many times does a band allow you to do that? And it was mm. just a, such a joyful celebration. And I was horrible at it, but it was fun. I just loved it. I think music is transformative and, and it reaches across all the barriers that we put up, either artificially or otherwise. And uh, it speaks to us. It's, it's certainly 
a universal language, not the only but one, but certainly one of them. So I've always been interested in music. I'm, I'm not good at it. I did this thing on social media called uh, Name That Quarantine, where I would try to pick out, I got that guitar right there on the far right or in the middle for that matter. I think I bought it for $69 and I just kind of taught myself a little bit. I had picked up a guitar years and years ago and every few five, six, eight, ten 10 years, I'd, I'd pick one up, but I'm really not formally trained. So I'd try to pick out little songs and see if people could name them. They were really good. Not my songs. People were really good at guessing. So I guess I got close enough, and it was a lot of fun. And I finally auctioned it off for a cause near and dear to my heart, the uh, Robert F. Kennedy Children's Action Corps. And uh, one of the guys who's uh, been a supporter for a long time and a fan of uh, my shows, Jim Stravinskis, uh, for your neck of the woods up there in New York, he, uh, he had the highest bid, so I signed it to him. Uh, and, and actually, it was broken, actually. I was doing an interview on some other thing, and I knocked it over, and it broke. The, the neck just broke right in half again. It was a very inexpensive, cheap guitar. But it brought me so much joy, uh, and, and I, I hope it brings him joy just looking at it and uh, being reminded that uh, music is the powerful force that it is. And you had it signed by I saw the photo of the broken guitar. I signed it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you signed it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And um, there we saw Saudi Probably Jack. The value of it, but that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. it doesn't matter. It went down to thirty uh, million dollars. <laughs> um. So, um, what's what's next for for Jack post pandemic? I I know we have a, a photo here where you looking like a badass bartender here. So I know there's some projects that we can all be looking forward to for Jack Maxwell. I mean, I mean, look at look at this photo. This is this is this is not the booze traveler guy. This is the dramatic professional actor. Jack. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, a friend of mine wrote this uh, movie called The Pragmatist, and uh, he uh, very kindly offered me the lead role. It's just a short, a labor of love. Yep. Uh, it was directed by uh, Peter Paul Basler, and uh, we just had fun. It was had wonderful actors in it. Uh, Krista Flanagan from Mad TV and Mad Men, uh, oddly enough, Adrian Wilkinson from Xena, Princess Warrior, and uh, other things. And it is great to be among actors again and to to solve acting problems and to talk about uh, bringing an author's words to life. It was just, uh, it was great. But yes, I am the, the uh, bartender who's also a hitman, but with a conscience. So that's why I am the pragmatist. And I don't know, this was just an on-set photo, but I guess it kind of sums up the character. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll pour you a drink with a smile and a story, but uh, my, my other job, <laughs> I'll kill you. I don't know. It was, <laughs> it was great fun to be on that. And then I have another thing. Well, as you said, the high road. Yeah. I start with a QA and a on uh, Friday nights, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, and then we roll into the mini segment of the high road and then an interview right after that. Uh, but on Sundays, I've been just doing this fun thing, uh, virtual cocktail hour, Jack's Place, we're calling it. And people can just join me and come on and have a drink and ask questions about anything they want to. Uh, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. And both of those things run simultaneously, both on my Facebook page and on YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel as well. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on your notifications or uh, join me on Facebook. And again, my social media Instagram and Twitter is uh, at Southie Jack, my old neighborhood in South Boston. S-O-U-T-H-I-E-J-A-C-K. And I'll see you soon. Yeah. And I just put up in the offers area. It's not truly an offer because we don't sell anything here on the webcast. But I have a link to the Facebook page, which also has the high road and the uh, the Jack's place. I actually, you know, in uh joined i was i was lurking i should say because i didn't actually uh uh interact but i watched last night where where jack had uh his guests were a couple um i don't know if they're a couple or not but they are partners in a uh local eatery and cocktail bar in phoenix uh specializing in jamaican food and um and of course when you think of jamaica and when you think of a cocktail what do we think of we think of rum and uh it was really kind of fun to watch that so i think i'll be a regular so people should you check that out that's sundays at what uh, you said 5 30. uh it's 80 uh, five pacific sunday five five pacific yeah. yeah yeah very 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 cool um so so last thing before we let you go 
once everything opens up and somehow there is a normal, whatever that might look like, where's the first place you'll go? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I have seen my mother from a distance uh, with masks, but I'll just go there and give her a hug. Once I know that's healthy and good uh, for everyone to do and the pandemic is, uh, quote, officially over, uh, I'll spend time with family and friends that I miss so much. And that starts with my mother first. And I'll just go visit people. I'll go into their homes and have dinner with them. Yeah, it's nice to go out and patronize local businesses. I'm big on that. But I just really miss the people that I've grown to love in my life. Uh, many places, I'll, even if I have to get in my car, if traveling the traditional way is not safe, I'll just uh, drive it across country and visit everybody uh, I miss so much. Good. Amen to that. Yeah, it's about people. That's what it is. It's not about where, how far, how long, but it's about who. Absolutely. Well, Jack Maxwell, I am uh, honored that you became, uh, you came on to Journey's webcast and to share some of these great stories, uh, your patience, your attitude, your perspective, your smile. Um, God, who, who doesn't love all that? I, I, I'm sending you uh, out here a, a, a virtual hug right now because uh, if I was there, I would do that for you, and I'd thank you so much. Thanks, man. Well, we'll, uh, have, a, we'll have a toast instead. How about that? Yeah, there we go. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having it was, me. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. That's Jack Maxwell. He is um, the legendary booze traveler, now the high road cruiser. Love him. Thanks to Jack. And we'll see you next week. I believe my next guest, I'm waiting for confirmation, is a, a guy named Siggy. He's from Iceland. He used to be the drummer for Sugar Cubes and produced Bjork, who was the lead singer for Sugar Cubes. He is running a thing called the Iceland Music Project. And he is really cool and got stories they used to open up for you too on several tours so uh, uh be really curious to see the stories we'll get from him thanks for tuning in and i'll see you on the next uh uh here we go this one here yeah. Thank you for tuning in to The Journey's Webcast. I'm Alan Carl, your host. Be sure to tune us in every Monday. The time changes depending on where we are in the world. This is Alan Carl, and where will your next journey take you? Thank you, everybody.